good to see everyone. Uh, today when I woke up, I started thinking, man, what is, this is not my sermon, um, and I'm fired up today, if you can believe that, but um, what is the whole armor of God? And I was just going to read a portion of it, and I'm not going to read all, uh, you know, ten verses of it, but I want you to listen to this, and as I am reading in God's Word, listen to how many times it says stand, and where are we today? Have we, do we stand for our marriage? Do we stand for Christ? Do we stand firm where others will believe? As Moses was coming down and, uh, with the tablets uh, the, the second time and his face was shown. And, and do, we, do we have that kind of stand or, or, or have we kind of conformed to the ways of an evil world but all we do is sit around and talk about how evil the world is when the light is in us because that's what the Holy Spirit does. So as I... As I rattle this off, because it's too good, but just listen to the stands. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore... Take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having all, having done all this to stand firm. Verse 14, stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness as the shoes for your feet having put on the readiness given from the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. So if you've come in today huh, and you're just, maybe, maybe your church hurt. Maybe, maybe, maybe the way you grew up was like the Sadducees and the Pharisees when everything was rules and rules and you can't do this and you can't do this and, and you didn't understand a lot of it. Or maybe... You're wanting Jesus to look like someone that you thought knew Jesus or said they knew Jesus and did something horrible to you. Well, hey, guess what? You're in luck because we serve Jesus, <laughs> not man. So that's a, that's a beautiful thing. So now you can come and he wants to strip all that away and give you a specific armor of God to say, hey, forget about all that stuff. Let's start, let's get ready, let's stand, and let's therefore stand, and let's withstand, because if we're standing with the Lord, then who can be against us, Scripture says. So, man, it's just, I almost want to preach on it right now. It's just, we're just, I'm telling you, people are going to see Jesus in you. They're going to see it in your walk. They're going to see it in your actions, not because you got fancy and quoted some Bible verse. It's in your heart. It says it's written on the tablets, and now it's written in your hearts. Jesus says this. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for who you are. Lord, thank you that I don't have to ride the coattails of anybody else, Lord. That I can come to you when my wife is discouraged, or when my life is seems like it's just heading a different direction, Lord. Lord, will Romans 12, 2, will I, what will I do, Lord? Will I conform to the ways of the evil world? Or, or will it be a renewing of my mind and spirit? Can I promptly say, if I've said something wrong to a loved one, heaven forbid, my wife, or, or whatever it looks like, Lord, I don't have to cop out and say, well, I'm not perfect, Lord, and then continue the bad behavior. Lord, you told me that's not so. You said the woman at the well. You said all is forgiven. The truth and spirit is all I have to focus on. What you did at Calvary, Lord. You did it for the person that just walked in today that's dealing with things maybe none of us know about. But, Lord, you do. And that's why you sent them. And, Lord, as cliche as some people think it sounds, I believe this is more than a history book, Lord, that I knew 2,000 years ago each and every seat accounted for today. You died for them. Not only did you die for them, but you wrote the words in this beautiful gospel of yours and that you knew they would be here today for a reason, to equip them with this whole armor of God and to go out with their might to strengthen their marriage, to strengthen relationships and Lord, just walk with you once and for all and not be ashamed of it, but stand there for. Lord, thank you for this time in your beautiful name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
If you'll take your hymnals, turn to 363. Please stand if you're able. And we're going to sing first and last. Keep up, it's a fast song, right? <laughs> <laughs> $6,000. 
because the people were stepping up and saying, we got bills. There were other checks out there that needed to clear, you know? And then the Sunday after that, they collected $7,000. So they got $13,000 in two weeks. And then a week or two later, they actually got their money back from the bank. That was miraculous to me in and of itself, okay? Then the final piece was, last Wednesday night, John, my brother John, he showed up for church and the treasurer walked up to him and said, we got a cashier's check in the mail from an anonymous donor today and it was $25,000. Oh, wow. So what they thought was a big disaster three months ago, they're, they're almost $40,000 ahead now. You know? And it just shows you that God works. God, God knows what he's doing. Something, something somebody meant for evil ended up being for good. Amen. And we talk about that. Anyway, that's all. Amen. 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 I love that. At this time, we'll take up the offering. Beautiful story.
be in the house of the Lord on this hot day. It's been warm like that, I tell you. Yes. Yes. I have to do it right. My daughter and my wife get on me before I start the same giant thing. Give giving credit, praising our Father in heaven. Your present pastor of this religious institution here, deacons, choir, piano, members, and friends. I greet you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I've done it right now, now I can do it right. <laughs> <laughs>
You know, I said, thank you, Dad, but Diane didn't want to call me, you know. Uh -huh. Then between Diane, my wife, and my daughter, I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Jesus. I Jesus. love Jesus. Amen, amen, I amen. I love Jesus. Mm. I love Jesus. Come on, come on. I love Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Praise his name. Thank you, Lord. Hey, thank you, Lord. Love, love. Amen, amen. I do too. Uh, so, Bert, don't be mad at me. If I ever ask someone to give me a drink, don't crack the seal. Uh, because I'm not going to turn around, but I am soaked. I didn't realize the seal was cracked. He was doing me a great deed, and I love that. That's a servant's art. Uh, I love that, but uh, I am soaked right now. But uh, It was funny because I was sitting there, and there's a huge puddle, but I was sitting there, and I was like, man, that's, that kind of feels good, but that's a lot from a condensation on a bottle, a, a bottle, you know? And I was like, man, but worse things could happen. So, uh, <laughs> it's, it's cooling, though. It is cooling. Uh, so open your Bibles to 2 Corinthians 4, uh, and we're gonna, I'm probably going to do 6 through 10. Um, it looks like the clock, I'm, I'm not even going to try to guess if I'm going to get through it or not, uh, because I really want to meditate on this. I want to bring up, bring up some reference scriptures, um, because uh, it's just important. And, and the title of my message today is, um, Broken, but Never but not unrepairable. Broken, but not unrepairable. And I plug in with, as you can imagine, a whole, whole lot of people. Uh, I do not sound, this is only because of the grace of a loving God, but uh, Friday I celebrated 17 years of sobriety free of drugs and alcohol. <laughs> I promise you, if you're, in this, if you're in this season, man, just keep walking, because I promise you, uh, 320 says, knock, behold, whoever knocks, I will answer, I'm there. So, so just remember, if your husband's going through something, a daughter, someone that you just, maybe, you, maybe you've seen them go through a certain pattern and you just want to throw in the towel, well, man, I want to encourage you, just don't, don't. And when you, when you have times like that, get on your knees and pray and just... As we talked about before, stand firm. But uh, uh, so, my three points: trust in the potter, testing the clay, and tasting a glimpse of the potter's fine, final product. And final product uh, meaning, remember, you are a chosen God's chosen people. Um, I, I heard an analogy uh, this past week that I really liked. And you've heard me say things like this before, but it was pretty genius. Uh, and I've said that we're each a puzzle piece for the kingdom of God. And when you when you when you pour that whole puzzle here, it, it kind of it can look confusing, it can look messy, pieces get flipped over, things like that. Uh, but your piece, nevertheless, if you look to the front, that's what Jesus sees. The front of the box is what he's already got planned out. That's the whole picture. So you are a puzzle piece of that picture. So he he needs, we need him, but he is using us as a vessel, an earthen vessel. So please cling on to some of these verses. I always like whenever there's a but or a therefore, I always want to read the verse before. So I'm going to start in uh, 2 Corinthians 4. I'm going to actually start 6 and go to 10. But he's saying, and this is Paul uh, in uh, Carnath, the church in uh, Carnath, uh, and obviously Corinthians. So, verse 6, I'm going to start out. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of, the, of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Man, I've got to pause there for a second. And the reason that scripture is so powerful is, sometimes I have to be in this world careful about the God, because the God that some people serve is the lowercase God, and the God we serve is face to face. That's what we're doing. That's why he's made us a vessel. His name is Jesus Christ. There is a name to it. It's not, and this is not to down recovery. I love recovery, 
It is not a group of drunks. A savior that died on a cross for your sins, just for you, if it was only you that showed up today, is not a, a group of drunks. That's, no, that's not what that means. I understand the content of that. We can get into that later, but let's stick to this. So, treasure in jars of clay is what uh, the beginning of this is, and 7 through 10 said. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, <laughs> but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body of the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus, that's the point, the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. Think about this for a second. If you walked in today, nothing is too broke that can't be repaired. Nothing. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord. <sighs> Lord, 17 years ago, I, I was so broken, Lord. I was so fed up with religion and just gossipers and slanderers. And Lord, and little did I know I fell right into it. I had backslidden so far, Lord, that, that the drugs and alcohol seemed like they were winning the battle. But, Lord, thank you. Thank you that you didn't shrug your shoulders and say, hey, Scott, it's too late. I can't help you. I've got nothing for you. Thank you for that, Lord. Lord, I still don't know a lot of the reasons why, but this beautiful gospel is starting to show me, Lord, that, that all I brought you was broken pieces. <laughs> And then you make them a masterpiece for your glory, not Scott's glory, for your glory, Lord. So, Lord, someone came in broken today, maybe a little confused. Uh, maybe religion's on their mind, Lord. Can I just encourage them today to, to get that off of their minds and put a relationship, an intimate relationship with the potter? And that is you, Lord. Lord, thank you for this beautiful time. In your name, amen. amen. So, broken, but uh, not unrepairable. Uh, so to help his readers understand, Paul used the image jars of clay in which people in his day stored their most valuable possessions and the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, had given his people the greatest treasures in the universe. But believing in this treasure doesn't make us impervious to pain. Instead, we hold this treasure in clay-like lives just as people of the end time had to shatter the clay jar to reveal the treasure. I love this. My ways, my ways. I had an idea of what my jar looked like, my ways. But it has to be shattered. God at times must break his people for the gospel to shine forth. When a person is broken, Jesus shines through. And let me pause right there for a second because there's going to be a lot of pausing because this broken thing, I know it. I've been there. I know what it looks like. I know what it looks like when you don't feel like you can count on man. I know what it looks like for, uh, for my mother who's suicidal at the time because they couldn't get her meds right at the time that goes to another preacher and she, uh, uh, because he knows someone that knows someone. He says, hey, we got nothing for you in this church. Move on. That's no church I ever want to be a part of. I don't care if five people got to sit here. Sin is real. Satan is real. Hell is real. But Jesus has risen. Please, for, man, don't ever forget that. And you are a vessel who's trying to use each and every day. And I promise you, I've lived it. I've lived it. Hey, Scott, you ought not to talk about alcohol and drugs on the pulpit. Why not? It's what we're dealing with. It's what we're dealing with. It's every day. Fentanyl is running rapid on the streets. Yes, I know it's not all about drugs. But I know it's about uh, depression and discouragement and, and dismay and, and the, th the things of a broken world. But God uses our experiences of brokenness to bring glory to himself and to mold and shape us into his image that's almost unfathomable I can't I'm like what how I'm an old drunk in a parking lot at, at uh, three chop in uh, Grove 17 years ago crying my eyes out wife's gone child gone relationships gone spiritually bankrupt but he says come on bring me your broken pieces wow Man, that's just that's so much hope in that. But how, Lord? I'm filthy rags, like Isaiah said. How? How will you do this? And he's like, just follow me. Follow me. Is it possible my jar is so full of the smug of an evil world 
that the prior verse is hindering my soul and in my walk of showing others <laughs> that with Christ there's a light in your darkness. But we must, must trust the potter. So verse 6 once again says, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God and the face of Jesus Christ. Man. Uh, there's a guy here today, and I hope he doesn't. I hope this doesn't embarrass him. His name is John, and he's in a, he's in a great band, man. It's good stuff. But uh, I, I visited Bert the other day, and, and he was there, and we had some great fellowship, and and what a beautiful opportunity to present the gospel. And he was like, "Hey, can I let you hear this song?" And I forgot the name of it, so forgive me. What is the name of that song, brother? Which one? Uh, the one about Satan. Old scratch. Old scratch. It's called. It's about Satan. And as I sit there and listen to that, it was literally my life when I backslid so far from Christ. And it's, it's literally what's taking place with kids today, with the world today. So it impacted me in such a way. I was just, I, it's very rare, and you guys know this, that you can, and my wife will amen this, but that I'm speechless. But I was, I was, I was speechless. I was like, wow, man, what? I, this is, this is crazy. It's a, because it's almost like the, the shoulder. Like, yeah, Scott, do it. Go here. Yeah, sure, you can have coffee with another woman. There's Your intent's not that. But what about her intent? And what about this? And what do we hold uh, when we talk about uh, uh, consecration? What do we, what's sacred to us now? Is anything sacred? And he's saying here, Paul's telling him, he's encouraging him, hey, your vessel, your earthly vessel, he's using, it is sacred. So pour out what's not good. Throw on the ground what's not good. Because it's not going to honor God. Because once I sit and, and think I can do this buffet style of living, it won't work. That light's not going to come in. I can't say, hey, Lord, look, I'm going to do this, do this, do that. But if it's cool with you, I'm still going to drink about a fifth of whiskey every other day. No. I can't get into that secret place with that. I can't get in. Now, is he shunning me completely? No. No, I don't believe that. Not if you're repenting on the stronghold that you're going through in your life right now. That's the difference. That's the difference. So don't hog the light that's been given to you. God gives us the light of the knowledge of God, and we have the responsibility to get it out. I love this. He shined it in so we could shine it out instead of shining it on, as some Christians seem to do. Man, shining it on. In other words, hey, be careful. Be careful. Because I can do this easy. Be careful. Because I think I'm a preacher, I can say, well, hey, your light looks a little dim. No, that's not the way. Just like Paula said, encourage a brother. Encourage someone. That's a good, good buddy of mine. And, and uh, man, I've known him since the sixth grade. And he called me up uh, um, uh, Monday. And we talked. And, and we prayed. And, and he's never actually said, can I pray for you and with you? But, uh, but not this time, but the time before he actually did that. And, and, and right now, and I know he wouldn't mind me saying this, uh, but he's locked up. He's locked up. But he was like, hey, Brother Scott, I'm in the Word. I'm in the Word, man. I'm in it. And I've heard people say this, and shame on you. And I can't lie, I've thought it sometimes, but I've, I thought, you know, I almost told him, hey man, just be careful with that jailhouse ministry. Because you, there's a list of things you're going to do when you get out, but then all of a sudden, because it's, it's good in there, you've got a captive audience. You can't go anywhere. You've got plenty of time. But instead of saying that, I said, oh man, God, let's pray, brother. Let's pray. God bless you. Let's pray. Hey, can I come visit you? Let's pray. Don't give up. Don't give up hope. Maybe, maybe it's the 10th time, maybe it's the 50th time, maybe it's the 100th time. But maybe that's when God chooses you. When I'm getting, just getting in the process of thinking to myself, oh, maybe I'll roll my eyes and shrug my shoulders. And then, then He reminds me, hey, Scott, I didn't do that to you 17 years ago. Don't you dare do it to Him right now. So what your carnal thoughts are, throw them out. Because the vessel I'm speaking of is face to face with Christ. Let's dive into the first point, trust in the potter. Verse 7 says, But we have the treasure in jars of clay to show the surpassing power belonging to God and not to us. I'm so glad Paul keeps reminding me of this. Because, hey, look, I'm telling you, every time I try to get puffed up, and it goes south quick. So have faith. Stand firm. A great, 
A great treasure is such a humble container if we know the potter. The treasure is the greatness of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the glory of God made evident through that gospel. It is the very light of God and the light of the knowledge of the glory of God reflected in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the greatest treasure in all creation. So we know the potter. But then it says, we have the treasure in jars of clay. The jars, huh, I don't know why. Man, I love reading God's Word. I do know why that. But when I was reading this, in my own personal time, it was early. I love my wife, but she's not a uh, morning person, so I didn't yell at the top of my lungs. But it was probably 6 in the morning. And I read this, and I was like, it, it just it's weird. That's what I love about the Gospel. I say it every week. I'm going to say it every week for now. Y'all hold me to this. Sharper than any two-edged sword, this word. Sharper than any two-edged sword. It's, and it's not Greek. It's not Hebrew. It's none of that. But it just dawned on me. Wait a second. The jars are us. Are you kidding me? The jars are us? Lord, you chose me to put light in? How? How is through a song about Satan? How is through a prayer tent? How is through not a bunch of activities? How is through when your wife's getting ready to throw in the towel, or when I'm getting ready to throw in the towel, we can encourage one another. Or maybe Robin can sing a song, or Diane can play the piano. Whatever it looks like, it's all kingdom work. That's your vessel. That's your puzzle piece. It's beautiful. Paul compares the value of God's light and glory, and the value of what he chose to put his light in, and glory <coughs> into. When you compare the two, it isn't hard. Hmm. It isn't hard to be amazed that God has put such a great treasure into clay pots. Who is worthy to be a container for God's light and glory. I love this. I love this. Because you can't smart your way into believing. You can't smart your way into salvation. You want to smart your way into salvation? It'll never work. That's you taking over your will. That's free will. When we say first free will, that's what free will is. That's you saying, okay, I can still believe, but I'm going to uh, watch pornography. I'm going to cheat on my wife. He'll never honor that. I don't care who you are. He'll never honor it. I'm telling you, I mention it a lot because I, I deal with a lot of men and women and things like that. Man, put that garbage away and watch what the Lord can do. Yes. Watch what He does to your vessel. Something that you thought was so broken and you didn't know it in a million years. Your wife will look at you, your co-workers will look at you and be like, man, something's going on. Something's going on. What, what is it? What is it? That's why I love this. It says the smartest person isn't smart enough. The purest person isn't pure enough. The most spiritual person, here we go, isn't spiritual enough. And the most talented person isn't talented enough. We're all just clay pots holding an unspeakable great treasure. Earthenware vessels were common in every home in the ancient world. They were not very durable compared to metal. And they were useless if broken. Glass could be melted down again. They were thus cheap and of little and strengthening value. Sorry. God chose to put us, to put his light and glory in the everyday dishes. I love this. Not the fine china. Not the fine china. So I'm telling you, man, the next time you sh the next time someone uh, uh, comes in and maybe they ain't got a suit on or maybe they, hey, don't, before you start judging them, be careful. He chose that vessel to come in here. Hey, I'm sorry. I'll call it out. I will not say the name of it, but I, yeah, I've been to churches with 400 people. Not one person said hello. Now, you could also, if the light's in me, you could also say, who did you speak to? And I did speak to many. But that's the, that's the light. So stop worrying about everybody else's light. Stop worrying about everybody else's vessel. This is your walk with Christ. But you've got to be bold about it. We've got to walk bold. I'll never forget, and I'm telling this story over again, but um, well, Jamie and I got married at Outer Banks, and I had asked uh, Annette. I was like, Annette, uh, that's uh, Pastor Jay's wife, uh, that he used to be a pastor here. And I said, Annette, uh, she collects um, seashells. And I was like, why do you like them so much? Why you? It seemed like she was almost fascinated by them. And she picked up one, and she was like, see this? And I said, yeah, I see it. She was like, it's smooth, right? And I was like, oh, yeah. She was like, it's do you think it's beautiful? Yeah, yeah, I do, and it was. It was beautiful. And she was like, when it was out there in the deep seas, it was whole. And it got broken up. And it went through some storms. Maybe, maybe a boat hit it. Maybe some things happened. 
that, you know, maybe, maybe it crashed into some stuff and it just kept breaking and breaking. And then it washes up on shore. And she said, and it's still beautiful. She said, that's the way what God does for us. And man, what a, I was like, wow. You can, you know, I've never looked at a seashell. I was like, you get that out of a seashell? I want that. Like, really? But that, it's the way it is. We think we're so broken that we can't be repaired. We think that because we've been, uh, we've gotten in a bad divorce that, that the Lord's never going to use us again. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. But the question is, did, are we repenting from it? If I want my light to shine, what's getting in the way? What's blocking that light from coming out? I don't have time for the Word. I don't have time to come to church. I don't have time for this. Hey, hey man, okay, that's cool. Then, then it's going to, it's a self, there's a passage in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, which I love. It says, he was a self-will run riot, although he usually didn't think so. And I don't want to be like that. I want to remain teachable. I want, my, I want the Lord to continue to work on my vessel. He's not gonna, it's not going to be a one and done. That's where it says the veil was lifted. When I get to heaven, that's when he's going to flip over the, the, the front of the box. And it's going to, oh man, that is beautiful. That's beautiful. So don't think you've got to walk this fine line. It's not about that. But it is about repentance to sin. How can I do this better? How can my light show up? Who is worthy to be a container for God's light and glory? Mm. Earthen vessels. It's amazing. Just amazing. God chooses to put His light and glory in the everyday dishes, not to find China once again. Jesus, when He came as a man to earth, Jesus was not embarrassed to live as an earthen vessel. God is not embarrassed to use clay pots like us. Man, <laughs> we're almost always drawn to the packages that are fancy. The best gifts often come in the most unlikely packaging. You ever notice that? The best gifts. My stepfather, he didn't, they didn't make a lot of money in, uh, at all. And, and he would, um, he saved up one year and he was, he was poor. It, it was safe to say we were poor. Pot of beans, the whole nine yards. I lived in kind of a rundown neighborhood. But we had each other. Man, I miss that. We had each other. We counted on each other. Like, man, I miss that. He loved me. For real, he loved me. And I'll never forget it. He saved up and saved up and saved up. And one year, he gave me a, uh, a, a box. And it was, a, it was a, a clock. And I was like, huh. That's, a, that's Oh, well. I was like, oh, man. Uh, and I didn't want to be ungrateful. I was like, oh, that, thanks, for the, thanks for the clock. It was a little, you know, alarm clock. And he was like, open the box. Open the box. And I opened the box, and it was a beautiful uh, signet ring with my signet on it. And I had never felt so special because I knew what it meant. I knew what it meant. It meant that, and I used to watch my mom when I would go for seconds. I knew when I was going for seconds, she was, she was still a bit hungry. And isn't that what the Lord does? That's our package, man. Don't take it for granted. This is your package. It's your vessel. Stop taking it for granted. Empty out what's not good. Give it to them. Point two is testing the clay. And I'm going to ask, uh, it's just too good not to do. It's definitely going to be a two-parter. I don't care about that. But I'm going to ask Brother John... Or, or sorry, Gene, to read uh, uh, Jeremiah 1, 5 and John 9, 5 through 6. And, we're, and just, this is testing the clay now. It's too good not to read. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Yeah. And before you were born, I consecrated you. Mm. I appointed you a prophet to all the nations. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with his saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud. Yes. Amen. 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 Man, this is Jesus Christ. Sometimes I just, some Sundays, I, I don't know, I just, I don't want to go through a checklist anymore. I want to know what he did. I want to know who he is. I crave to know his heart. I crave to know when the disciples were doubting him, how he must have been hurt. Or when that beautiful verse 
that one verse says, Jesus wept. Oh, Jesus wept. Earthen vessel. He could have called 10,000 angels, but instead he said, no, I'm going to, they'll see. No, Scott, they won't see. Everybody's losing. We're losing. The Christians are losing. Nonsense. The bold Christians that stand firm, that withstand, that therefore stand, that stand and be bold for their families, that stand and be bold no matter what, because they're not embarrassed to say, yeah, I believe in God. What's that? Yeah, I believe in Christ. That's who I believe in. Jesus Christ. Now, does that mean, I've said this before, you got to kick down the door and tell people they're going to hell, damnation, all that stuff. No, you don't have to do that. You can meet them right where they are. And you can give them a hand and say, hey, come here, man. I know you're hurting. There are many people. I've been talking to a guy that's new in recovery for, he's called me every day since last Monday. Every day. And then finally, the other day, I sent him a series of questions and some things to kind of help him out uh, because he's lonely. He's lost. His girl's gone, the whole nine yards. He's just, he's feeling broken. And then finally, I knew the question was coming, and he was finally like, hey, what are, you, are you still a chef, or what are you up to? And I was like, uh, no, I'm not. A, I'm a pastor. Uh, oh. <laughs> and it's funny, because I can almost picture his thought process, because it used to be mine. He's like, oh, man, I think I cursed 18 times. I think I did. But, but I don't care about that. I don't care about that. Now, am I condoning cursing this morning? Absolutely not. What I'm condoning is what I think has been lost in the pulpit. And it's 922 of Corinthians. That I had to become weak that I might win the week for Christ. That i got to meet people where they are under all circumstances. To let them know how to stand firm. To let them know that if they're so broken and down. Because I see a lot of depressed people that have conformed to the ways of an evil world. And it's not working for them. They keep falling. They keep falling because they don't know. And you got to say more than, oh man, if you come to church, what's that mean? I can go sit in the parking lot of a gym and still get fat. I got to go in. I got to take some action. I got to do some things. That's the key. I think it was Spurgeon that said, standing in the garage will never make you a car. This is a dwelling. Now, I said it in a video early, early this morning, because I've been here since it feels like the crack of dawn, that no matter what, you can be used. You can be used. That this is just a dwelling, but the difference is, I want to come to this dwelling. I want to see that Harry's doing great. I want to see that I know Larry over there is, is hurting because him and I, and I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, dug a hole the other day in 100 degree heat, uh, and we did it uh, because his 16-year-old uh, dog died. And that was sad. And can I just tell you, I thought I had some pretty bi big biceps and I feel like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm losing some weight. and some, I am not in shape. That about killed me. But I loved it. You know why I loved it? I actually joked with him at one point. And I said, hey, brother, I know we were going to bond. And I'm sitting there, boom, and hitting nothing but rock. And, and I was like, man, I know we said we were going to bond. I just didn't think the Lord was going to do it like this. So you let him pick the scene. And just like I said last week or a couple weeks ago, the scene, not the story. You trust him in this season. Trust him. Trust the way your vessel is right now. And if you're asking him to get rid of some of that stuff, trust that he will continue to build you, to mold you. That's why 3418 of Psalms simply says, and I say it all the time because it bears repeating to a, to a hurt world that he draws nigh to the broken hearted. He draws nigh to the broken heart. Hold on. What about the? What about me, Lord? I'm, I'm doing commentary. I'm, I'm reading. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to get some schooling and do some things. We're going to a conference where there's seminars. And what about that, Lord? Uh, I draw nigh to the broken hearted and save, save the crushed in spirit. I save them. I pull them out of the muck and the mire. I pull them out. That's what I do. So you got to test the clay. And I wasn't going to read this, but I have to. And we're never going to make it to point two. I don't care. It's just too good. This gospel is too good. I'm so... Man. Why did it take so long? I used to, I used to fight with the Lord on that. I was just... I had drinking and drugging and partying and fighting people and acting like I'm so bad and knives and Sorry, Bert, guns, and, and I still love guns. Sorry. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, I mean, it's, but I don't want to miss those opportunities. 
I told John and Bert the other day when, he, when they were in the garage, I was, like, I was like, hey, John, guess what? This was, in God's eyes, he doesn't see a garage because it's all about the soul and the heart. He had another intention. You came over for one reason. I came over for one reason. Bert got up. He had a reason. We all have one reason. But then he said, hold on, where two or three are gathered, there I am. And I was like, wow, this is, when you look at it like that, it, it's a different story. It wasn't just a song. It wasn't just a song. It wasn't just the piano. It's, it's all part of this beautiful puzzle that's on the front. And it's beautiful. And testing the clay, and I'm, I'm not going to get into point two because I want to say that it's just too good. And point three is even better. Uh, I would say I'm sorry, but I'm not. Uh, but I want to read this to you. And it's quite a few verses, so just bear with me. Uh, you do not need to put them up on the screen, uh, but it's just too good. And it's, it's basically what's being prophesied. Because when I thought about this molding and shaping and forming and, and all that, and, he, and I felt so unworthy, and I was like, man, how is he doing this? Like, is he is still, Lord? Yes, yeah, still. So there's hope. There's hope that if you got into a huge argument last night with your wife or a loved one or whatever it looks like, there's hope. There's hope that we can say, Lord, look, forgive me for that. But don't just forgive me for it so in a different manner I can do it again. So I can dress up and flirt with sin. Don't do it for that reason. Do it so I can honor you. And so you can make me a person that you've already said you were going to, you, you would send every, every week I say this, you would send the helper. Uh, John 14, I believe, you would send the helper, the Holy Spirit, once he departed and ascended. That's beautiful. For me, I just don't feel worthy of that. So I'm going to read this real quick. And it says, uh, for the scripture says to Pharaoh, for this very purpose, I've tested you. Sorry, I've raised you up that I might show my power in you and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. So then he has mercy on whoever he wills and he hardens whoever he wills. Interesting, interesting. I could almost preach on this. I promise I won't. You will say to me then, huh, why does he still find fault? For who can resist his will? But who are you, O oh man, to answer back to God? Will what is molded say to its molder, why have you made me like this? Has the potter no right over the clay to make out the same lump on one vessel and for honorable use and Another for dishonorable use? What if God, desiring to show his wrath and to make known to his power, has endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction? Wow, what? Man, that just sounds like Paul's so deep in this, but it's so true. That's hard. I don't read that. I don't just listen to the destruction and the wrath and all that. I, I listen to it's, it's what he wills. It's what he wills. People get so confused. Well, am I doing God's will? Well, I mean, what are your strongholds? What's going on in your life? What are you allowing to get in the, in the way of your walk with life? I love when people say to me, and I'm sorry. I love it when someone says, yeah, I'm not into religion. The first thing I say is, me too. I'm not into religion either. I do not mean that ever on this pulpit as a disrespectful thing to the first free will or to Baptists or anything. But that's not who I serve. Jamie hates when I say this, but I'm sorry, I'm going to say it again. It's not in here. That's what he's saying to the Pharisees. Oh, you Pharisees, you Sadducees, you, you follow me with your, with your lips, but your heart is so far from me. Have we gotten so religious that we forgot about the Lord Jesus Christ? That we forgot about, hey, if you did that for me, you've done it for... If you did it for one, you've done it for me. I saw a family on the side of the road, and I'm not sounding off a trumpet, and I don't care what people think. Oh, be careful. Maybe you're being played. Maybe you've been played. Maybe you've been played. The Lord knows my heart. You do you, I'll do me. I turned around. I ain't got a lot of money right now. I don't care. I got the Lord Jesus Christ working in my life. Both of us, before we go out of the house, we got an armor of God we put on and say, let's do this thing. I love my wife. Unless I'm cooking. Unless I'm cooking and she's cleaning because she's a neat freak and I love her to death. But, but that armor of God is crucial. The armor of God is crucial. So just remember the testing. The testing of the clay. Man. 
So crucial right now. Shame on us. We're being sent every single day to different places. Shame on us for, for, oh, that's just not my walk. That's impossible. To not spread the gospel? How can that not be your walk? That's impossible. If that's not your walk and that's not the way you are, bad news today. Man, check your motives. Come to the altar. And I'll be there right with you. i got to check my motives at the door. Because if I'm going to trust any kind of process, if I'm going to know his law, it's got to be more than just religion, religionism. I love that Spurgeon said that once. And it's true. I don't want that. I want the relationship end of it. Because I'm so afraid that just like the, uh, the Hebrews did, just like the, the Pharisees, and I said it before, the Sadducees, they, they were so indoctrined in this thing that they forgot it had become almost like uh, just, it, it became their law. It became their law. It's almost like they had forgotten about a new covenant. And what does the new covenant say? Just simple. Love like I love. And that's tough. Especially when you know for a fact someone's slandering your name all around town. Happened to me many times. I prayed with guys in my house. I prayed with them on my porch. Shed tears with them. Man, the Holy Spirit's in it. At one point we had 70 plus people up in here. Everybody's singing, doing good. But then you know what I think? And I'm sorry. If this is cocky, may the Lord deal with my vessel. May He deal with my heart. I don't think they left. I think the Lord Jesus Christ removed them. Because I think if you're living right, you're doing right, forget that perfection stuff. I'm talking molding and shaping in the image of God and you're doing that in your life and you're the best you can every day to get on your knees and surrender to Him and pick up your cross and follow Him, I believe He's going to honor that. And the people that aren't good for your walk, the people that aren't good for your talk, the music and garbage that's not good for your walk, He'll, he'll, let, he'll let it go away whether you want it to go away or not. Because that's what I'm saying to the Lord. I'm like, Lord, forget about all this stuff of give me, give me, give me. Lord, take away what's not right. I'm not listening to garbage in my house on that TV. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Yes, that includes sex. Oh, come on, it's just actors. I'm sorry. If they're nude, I can see it. That doesn't honor my wife. I don't want that garbage on my TV. Believe me, if you're sitting where I was... At one point in this church, I used to listen to that, roll my eyes, get in the truck, make fun of the guy for the most part, and wonder why things weren't lining up. And then once I surrendered it, things started lining up. That's when things started lining up. Why? Because I got perfect? Because I got religion? Because I came to church once? No. Because on a daily basis, I love the Lord that no matter what happens, on a daily basis... <laughs> he gives me do-overs. He gives me another chance. And even in the middle of the day, and this has happened, there are times I've said stuff to Jamie, and I don't mean curse words. I think both of us have gotten really good about that. I, I, don't, I don't, I really, I know this sounds perfect. I just, I don't curse. But when I say that, it took a long time. It was part of my vocabulary. I was just used to it. Now, do I think the Lord stopped working on me because I was cursing? No, I do not believe that. Some, some Baptists do. I don't, I'm sorry. I believe there's a molding process and a shaping process. And if I'm repenting and then having that faith, then when I'm going ahead, he's been where I'm at. Just like he told Moses, I'll send angels before you to clear your path. Moses was nervous. Moses stuttered. And what did he say? He didn't say, I'll be your words. Look up the scripture. It says, I'll be your mouth. That's how good God is. I'll be your mouth. So I often think sometimes when I'm at the gym, I listen to a lot of contemporary Christian and, and I listen to some other stuff. But I often think if someone comes up and says, hey man, uh, what, I remember you saying you were a pastor. Do you mind if I ask what you're listening to? Not because I'm a pastor. What will honor the Lord in that moment? What way in will He make? What way in am I letting Him make? What, what Of that vessel, what do I need to pour a little bit out of and pour some more of His light into this evil world that people are going to see and they're going to say, hey man, how on earth did you do that? And then I can say, hey, Take the you out of it. Let me tell you him. Let me tell you the him. Let me tell you Christ. Let me tell you what Jesus can do. Jesus. Man, I love when the Gaither brothers used to do that song. Jesus, there's just something about that name. And then, and then the lady, I don't recall her name, but she would, uh, over the song, oh man, it makes me melt. I used to be a tough guy, what happened? And it makes me melt. But as she's singing the song, and then the background singers kick in and then she starts saying, at the foot, she starts narrating. 
at the foot of a young boy who's dying in his bed. Jesus. Jesus. And the prison gates. Of, and she's just going all over the place. And, and she just keeps saying, Jesus, Jesus. And I'm thinking, let's be quiet. Be quiet. I want that. And ask Diane to play the music. I want that so bad. I crave it. Why? Because it sounds good on the pulpit? No. Because little by little, I want to trust the potter. And y'all hear me reference all the time, iron sharpens iron, and it's on my voice now. Yeah, some people say, oh, it really sounds cool, man. But let me tell you what it means to me. I used to be a chef for many years, and I had a tri-stone. And that tri-stone, you have three levels. The first level was real rough. Man, that thing was rough. And it's getting the, the shreds and shards off that knife to get the original edge back, to get the original image of who Christ and what he wants. And then you flip it, and then there's a medium grade. Medium grade. So maybe maybe I've opened my Bible, and maybe, or maybe I've gotten on my knees and surrendered, and that's, that, I'm on the rough season. I'm on the rough season. I'm not understanding why uh, uh, people die, and I'm not understanding why so much hurt and I'm not understanding how some days I can feel like I can be there for the world, but I can't be there for my own wife. I'm not understanding that. But then he flips it because I keep trusting him and I have faith. And then, and then there's that medium grade. And then the knife's getting a little sharper. And I'm like, all right, but not all right like, oh, look at me. No, because then there's a fine edge that just brings it all to the, to the final process. Final process. And he's just... Going away at it, going away at it. He's making it perfect. He's making it beautiful. He's making your vessel beautiful. Piece at a time. You bring it to him broken, he promises you he's going to make it whole and continue to make it whole, no matter what it looks like. You don't understand, Scott. My kids don't believe in that stuff. You don't understand, Scott. My kids aren't even here. You don't understand. Man, no matter what, under every single cost that it takes, pick up your cross, no matter what they see, and eventually they will keep seeing it. They will keep seeing it. There is no doubt in my mind that George Mon over there has been on his knees with Paula and had prayed for Brother West that's sitting back there many, many days and probably shed tears over it just like I do my son. I don't pray that he comes to his senses and comes to church and supports me every week. That's not what I pray. I pray, Lord, when he gets in a dark season, and I mean dark, I mean dark. I'm talking like possible suicide. The world's got him down. Maybe he just got fired. Maybe a girl that he really liked and he invested some stuff in and, and he, he, the hole in his soul is so great. I pray that he calls me and he has done this before and says, hey, hey, Dad, look, I, I hope that he doesn't have any disclaimers. But I hope he just says, hey, Dad, hey, you know how you pray all the time? <laughs> Will you, hey, could, could I get one of them? You're not all out of them because I didn't come to church, did you? No, no, son, no way. No, the springs are the springs of hope. The springs of hope are there because of the suffering, because of the tested, because I was tested in the fire. Like First Peter says, the genuineness of your faith is tested by fire. It's not tested by the, the beautiful springs up on the mountaintop. Uh -uh. It's in that valley, and that's where we'll be molded and shaped. And man, that's such a beautiful thing today. Man, I hope I never get sick of it. I hope I never get sick of it. Man. this time when I begin to pray in the quiet if you are not a born again believer in Christ this is where the message kind of goes a different way but only because of this because of God's word and I know I said it too you, you're not I got to have a ready made answer so I, I was the one he chose and you know why? Because I was the one saying, oh, you mean the stuff written by man? Manipulated by man? Written by, probably skewed up in the, in the years to come, 2,000 years ago, and you want me to live off some, let me guess, some holy living word? Hey, my brother, I'll tell you one thing. I said, I told Jamie I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to do it again. And I've said it in this congregation, I can promise you one thing. I've watched that word mold me. And I mean, bring me to my knees. I miss, I don't care what anybody thinks about this. I miss my brother. Man, I miss him so bad. I'm not even going to lie to you. Well, Pastor, you ought to get over that. He's in a better place. 
Hey, forget you. How about that? Forget you. This is my walk. You know what that is? That's the Lord comforting me. When I sat at that table thinking of his laying right in front of the door. He almost made it to the door. And he's laying there. The guy said, sir, are you sure you want to see him? Yeah, I want to see him. Soot all over his beard. And the first thing I thought was, yes. Man, as bad as this hurts. He didn't grab the door handle. The Lord Jesus Christ, the living God, pulled him into eternity. He's not sleeping somewhere where I go. It's promised. You're there. I go with to prepare the place, he says. Man, what a hope is that? That's a hope that gives me energy. Well, what are you talking about? Aren't you sad? You're very sad. But it's a hope that it's a different kind of sad now. Because he's molded it, shaped it. And 2 Corinthians can come so true when he says, In all your afflictions, I'm going to comfort you. Why? So I can comfort others. That's the deal. That's the deal. So if you were not born again, please, I want you to have this. It's simply just saying, Lord, we'll pray with you. We won't embarrass you. All you got to do is just come whisper in my ear, hey, I'm ready. I'm ready to be saved. And we'll set up something. I don't care if we got to set it up outside in the pool. That's the heart. The ceremony is the baptism. And we love it. But man, I've been dipped in the water. And I had my way of trying to do things my way. And it, it fell short every single time. And as I pray, for anybody and all, will we come to the altar? Will we be honest enough to say, Lord, I've gotten a few things right, wrong, or otherwise. Doesn't matter. Doesn't mean you did something wrong when you're at the altar. Altars, you and you and the Lord doing business. Can you do it from your seat? Absolutely. I'm ready to give it all to Him. I'm ready to walk with Him. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank You. Thank You, Lord, that, Lord, if the gospel isn't real, if there's no application, Lord, or practicality to it, Lord, I don't believe it would have ever been written. Lord, you said that your word can't be tampered with, so I cannot do that. But Lord, for the one that sits here today, and maybe they had a different version of what church looks like, Lord, can we encourage them, Lord, that the church is within? You said it. Three days later, you would destroy the temple and rise again. You are the temple, Lord. The light is in us. Will that light of the gospel be shown in my lips and my actions this week? Will the beautiful salt, will I be able to taste it, Lord? Even and especially in pain and suffering. Paul was in chains and said, I'll use this to advance the gospel. Oh, Lord, just give me a portion of that, Lord. Just a portion. I need it. Lord, we love you. Lord, if there's anybody here that's new today, please guide them to connect with me, Lord, so we can just, I won't blow their phone up, Lord, but I just want to let them know they can call any time. Even if it seems repetitive. Even if it seems like we're not getting it, Lord. <laughs> I know you've got a plan. If I'm repenting and a stronghold's got me down, Lord, I believe you've got a plan to make that a beautiful masterpiece. Lord, thank you for this. In your beautiful, beautiful name, amen. I believe my pants are dry. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> I, believe, I believe my pants are dry. So. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit, he, he took care of the, the, uh, the earthly pants. <laughs> I, I do wish he'd have made me taller sometimes. Uh, that way I could hide my, hide my midsection a little bit more. But, but seriously, thank you for coming today. Uh, it encouraged me. Uh, I used to be so focused sometimes on numbers. I'm not going to lie to you, but getting to know each and every one of y'all on an intimate level, bringing food to people and doing things and praying and, and Ron showing up and George calling and showing up and all of us having a part in this. Mary coming up here and singing a song, whatever it looks like. You know. And i got to say this because it's heavy on my heart. God bless my wife. Please continue to pray for her. Because watching her work all week and go through all this houses and things like that and then come home and I'm like, oh yeah, baby, can you do my sermon? It's only eight pages. 
Can you mind doing that? Oh yeah, and can you do this? And can you do that? And can you do this? And we need to do this and we need to do this because we're not active enough and we gotta do this and this and I'm just wearing her down. So just pray, pray for her. And I love, love, love what Paul has said. Let's encourage one another. I probably send 30 texts out a day with all different messages. And look, if you're going to encourage me, I'm sorry. I don't know if this is biblical. Please, don't put me in a strand with 80 other people where my phone just continues to go. I don't, I'm sorry, I'm going to say this now. I don't even care if it's a scripture. Don't do it. Show me that you, there's a personal touch to it. Show me that there's a personal touch, not just, hey, I did my 80. Now my phone's going to go off the rest of the day on top of as much as it goes off already, which I'm grateful for. But please, please, don't, don't put me in the strand. I'm going to ask Brother Ron to close us out. Lord, we know that we're a broken bunch. And we know that you can put us back together. And you have. And you will continue to do so because that's just who you are. And it's all sadly who we are. Because it seems like we keep breaking. And you keep fixing. God, we just thank you for loving us so much that you won't let us go. You hold on and we turn loose. We give ourselves to you now, God. Please keep patching us up and lead us in the path that you'd have us try. And may you always, always have the glory. In Jesus' name.